Hey, what's up guys? It's Jack and today I'm going to tell you how to remember using audio. So first of all, audio is just a form of memorying that involves essentially getting like a letter pair and sticking a vowel in the middle and creating one syllable sounds for each two stickers essentially. And as you can probably tell, it's a very efficient way to memorize because you don't have to spend like an eternity coming up with words or like some kind of fancy image or story. Um, you just, for the most part, stick a round vowel in the middle between two letters and that's all you have to do. So the creation process is very straightforward and simple. But I guess the downside is that it tends to be more of a short-term type of memory strategy. So for instance, typically um, fast blinders will memorize the corners first using something like images or words, and then they'll memorize the edges using audio, and then they'll execute the edges right after because it's still um, fresh in their mind and it's short-term and then do the corners. Yeah, I think the main reason why I recommend using it is because um, pretty much all the top blind solvers I know of, like there's only one exception I can really think of and he kind of quit doing cubing like a few years ago and I think he memorized using like a bunch of math symbols and some characters from a video game. But anyway, um, I'm just going to teach you how to do just that. So as I mentioned before, the main premise is getting a letter pair and making that one syllable, typically through putting a random vowel between two letters. So using this cube as an example, just for the edges, um, I have DR, so I'd make that door perhaps, IO, so kind of make that yo, I'll talk about that later, and W, so new, FB, FOB, then AJ, ADGE, X, Y, J. Um, for the most part, um, as I mentioned before, you're putting some kind of syllable, like vowel between two letter pairs, so DR, I made door, um, IO, um, so every now and then you're going to come across um, some of these weird cases, so I kind of just make like a yo sign out of that because um, otherwise it'd be like io and that kind of sort of destroys the purpose of using audio at least doing so efficiently um, in w new you might also notice that I tend to lean towards using actual words you don't have to use words but I do find myself gravitating towards them probably because they seem um, more familiar fb4 I'm pretty sure that's a word <laughs> aj adj I mean you, there's no point in sticking a vowel between those two letters when you have a vowel starting off X, Y, um, let's use Shay. So X, I kind of think of like an X, SH sound. I know a lot of people that I've coached and just people in general use that. And in this case, I just put like an A in the middle. And going back to IO, um, as you also might've seen at the end, I used Y. So then you might be wondering like, don't you have issues with like overlaps? And yes, I do. So I think you, there are ways to go around like um, fixing those. So for example, um, I have, I'm not using IO as an example, but OI, I also have OY and OE. I don't know, I use the same two fingers or finger and thumb. So what I initially did was um, keep OY as OI because that seemed really straightforward. I changed OI to OIN. So I just put like an N at the end, just to differentiate it from OY. Um, and for OE, I put a D at the end to make it like an OID sound. So that's like a way to diff perhaps make things a bit more differentiated because I think it's inevitable that they're going to be overlaps. Even if you were to try to make, for example, IO like YON or something instead. So putting like an N instead of um, just keeping it as YO, which is what I did. I, I think you're going to find overlaps here or there, like no matter what you do. For example, um, A, M, A, N, like AN and AM, although you can maybe turn that into like and and arm or something but i'm pretty sure once again i'm pretty sure it's like inevitable given that there's like 440 combinations or something but of course um it's always good to maybe try to avoid it when you can although to be honest with you i think i've gotten a bit lazy and that's also why i still have like for example io and yo being like the same sound but i don't tend to mix them up that often i think i'm able to tell based on the context of the solve and for all those that already use audio and want to um, become quicker um, first advice I have is to generally stick to using six pairs maximum um, in regards to audio. So in this case, uh, do yo new fob add she. So I tend to find myself able to hold six pairs for audio, but seven is a bit of a stretch. I, I'd have to do some sort of like, I don't know, letter quad or maybe they're like two really easy to remember back to back syllables or something. But usually after 12, I tend to go visual for the last two. And it's kind of easy to tell what those two are because of... Because when they're like 14 letters, it's usually like a bunch of cycles and stuff. And I can kind of tell like visually pretty easily. But six pairs seems to work the best for me because um, 
that tends to be like the average amount of letters you'd have anyway for edges in three blind. For big blind though, um, for example, when memorizing X centers for four, four blind, I do images for the first four pairs and then I do like audio for the next five pairs. Um, I tend not to go six because I want to play it a bit safer Then I just do visual for the rest. So in big blind, I go a bit safer, but six pairs seems to be um, the way to go. And that segues into the next point is, and that is that I recommend um, grouping them up. So if you paid attention to what I said earlier, um, I'll do it again. Doyo, new fob, add shay. So you might hear that I'm actually grouping it up as um, Doyo, new fob, add shay. So three groups of, with two pairs each. Um, the reason being is that I think, like our brains are better at um, memorizing things than when they're like grouped up in the certain parts. And I think I just sort of gravitated toward that. And even in my 15 second solve where I spoke out my memory as well, you can actually hear myself um, grouping them out um, when speaking out loud. Um, if I got something like, um, what's it, 10 letters, for example, I just do like, doyo, new fob, adj. So I just kind of have that learn edge. But if they're five pairs, it's like easier anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And if I had like a visual flip at the end, I just visual that. But yeah, sometimes I also swap, like do, what's it? Two groups of three, so um, perhaps like do your new fob add shay. I think this kind of varies, but I think I stick to the first like type, so two groups of three for the most part. I haven't heard of other top liners doing this, or maybe they haven't really talked about it much, but um, at least for me personally, I find it quite useful. And I guess the other general advice is to be consistent. So in practice, obviously, but also in regards to using letter pairs, because I think. Well, I mean, for court, like words and images, I tend to use the same words or images for each specific letter pair because I don't want to spend too long thinking about stuff um, during a solve, obviously, because I have no time. But I think over time, like over the course of a couple of years, I think you'll naturally change stuff. Oh yeah, I think there was one point for JS, I thought of like Jessica because she was like the name of like some kind of like composer who was like conducting like one of my the orchestras that I participated in. But then it gradually shifted towards, I think, Jessica from Toy Story 2 because I felt like um, I hadn't seen that former Jessica in a while and it just gradually just <laughs> transitioned. But for the most part, oh, and that tends to be, I think, the same for like edges, even though edges are like sounds, but that's kind of the feeling that I have. Sometimes things gradually change a little bit, but for the most part, um, they stay the same and I recommend you do, th do that as well. It's just like this door, like, no matter what troubles come in life and no matter how many obstacles you overcome, this door will always consistently be ready to open unless it's locked, but it isn't, so yeah. So yeah, that's it from me. Um, that's how to memorize using audio, highly recommend it. I know a lot of people that are like beginners starting out, they tend to use like a weird, sort of an interesting mix of I think words and stories for the most part or some other shenanigans. I just did full visual because I was weird. Um, but I definitely recommend looking into using audio because it's really fast. It's a huge time save. And I think once you generally get comfortable with the blind fundamentals and you're kind of okay with holding a bunch of weird sounds in your head, then yeah, that's how you get a, a dank speed boost. Um, if you like this video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for more helpful blind tips and otherwise have a safe day, um, have a great day and bye.